You are watching New York Knicks Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. You know the NBA offseason is officially here when you got Bill Simmons and Zach Lowe of ESPN talking trade rumors. And yesterday on their shows, they were talking about Joel Embiid to the New York Knicks. And now Doc Rivers has been fired by the Philadelphia 76ers. So where there is smoke, there is absolutely Fire. And in today's show, we're going to break down, one, what a trade might look like for Joel Embiid. I'll give you some of my concerns that I have with trading for a guy like Joel Embiid and why or why not the Knicks may or may not make this trade. We're going to break all that down. But first, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel because we're going to be putting out videos every single day, all off season long on the latest Knicks news and rumors. We're going to be your one-stop shop for everything orange and blue. So hit that sub button, lock us in, and help us get to 30,000 subs. And remember, we're going to be live tonight on the channel for the NBA Draft Lottery. We'll go live about an hour before so, probably about 7 p.m. Eastern time tonight. So turn your notifications on, make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you tonight. Let's first go to what Bill Simmons had to say about Joel Embiid, because this is not the first time Simmons has talked about it. This is actually the third time in the past 12 months that Simmons has really hinted at an Embiid to New York trade. We've talked about it prior on the channel, so we got to talk about it now. He said the Knicks are just waiting for Embiid to say it's time for me to go. They have the relationships. They have Leon Rose and World Wide West, who were Joel Embiid guys. They've been waiting for this moment right now, and it is here. He also said in the past that the Knicks are in pole position to make a trade for Joel Embiid if that Philly thing goes nuts this spring. And he said pretty much, it's like the biggest kept secret that everyone is talking about in the NBA. It's kind of like the underground story right now. That's what he said a couple of months ago. Then he said what we just told you yet just yesterday. And he's hinted at this for a while. I mean, Bill Simmons, I don't want to say he has all the inside scoop, but he definitely has some sources. And I don't think he would repeatedly talk about this subject if there wasn't a little bit of traction there when it came to Embiid and the New York Knicks. Zach Lowe, he joined Bill Simmons on what he had to say about Embiid, and this is what Zach said. He said, "If the Joel, Joel loves Philly. Philly loves him. I think it would be very, very hard for him to follow the superstar forcing my way out of here model. But if James leaves, James Harden, I don't know what's going to happen. But if I'm the Knicks, all these Carl Anthony Towns rumors are going to start now. Forget that. I have a good team. I have Jalen Brunson. He's an awesome point guard. Why am I upending my team for Damian Lillard if he ever becomes available? I've got a point guard. I missed my chance on Donovan Mitchell, and that's okay. That turned out to be an okay decision. I still got all three chips. Towns ain't the guy. I'm paying those chips for. I'm waiting for the next guy. Embiid, maybe that's a guy I'm playing all the chips for. Four. And I 100% agree with what Zach Lowe had to say. I mean, my guy Zach knows ball. And if I'm going to trade all of the chips that I have stockpiled, if I'm the New York Knicks and Leon Rose over the past couple of years, I'm not doing it for Carl Anthony Towns. And I'm not doing it for Damian Lillard like Stephen A. Smith wants to do. We'll do a video later in the week talking about Stephen A. Smith saying he wants to trade for Dame Lillard. It just makes absolutely no sense. But I'm with Zach. If I am going to go all in for a player – for at least a guy that seems like he could be on the move, it is Joel Embiid. And the Knicks, they have a bunch of assets. This graphic comes from ESPN, and Bobby Marks did a great job of uh, kind of just illustrating what the Knicks have at their disposal. Their own free agents, they got to take care of. Josh Hart, he is a restricted... Um, as a player option, excuse me. You got 11 first-round picks in the next seven years. You got roster continuity. You got a, a bunch of young players like OB, Quickly, Grimes, Miles McBride, R.J. Barrett, Mitchell Robinson that you could trade. And right now, the Knicks would have the mid-level exception and the biannual and veteran minimum to offer so far. So I want to ask you guys this question. You know what we got at disposal, and you know everything that goes on with Joel Embiid. So do you think the Knicks – should trade for Joel Embiid. Let me know what you think down in the comment section. Type T for trade, type P for pass. It's going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So if you can hit with that YouTube ad break right now, scroll on down and let me know, do you want to see Embiid in orange and blue? Joel Embiid is a great basketball player, no doubt about it. In my opinion, he was once the best center in the NBA. Now I unfortunately have Nikola Jokic as the best center, but he's still a number two center, no doubt about it. But I do have my concerns with Embiid. It's not just all a beautiful little fantasy 
with Joel Embiid. Let's start with my biggest prop, and that is the fact that he misses a lot of time. I mean, in the last five seasons, he's never missed less than 14 games. I mean, going back 2018, he missed 18 games, then 22, then 21, 14, and 16. Last two years, I could deal with that. I could deal with 14 missed games and 16 missed games. Honestly, I could deal with even 22 missed games if the big fellow is suiting up for the playoffs, but the thing is, he's missed playoff time as well, and I can't deal with that, to be quite honest with you. Four missed playoff games in the last two seasons, and the guy has missed six playoff games in the last five seasons. That's primetime basketball, and I can't afford, and the Knicks can't afford if you go all in for Joel Embiid for him to be missing those games. We do know how special he is, especially in the regular season. The guy this year, I mean, he was the MVP for a reason. 33 points per game, 10 plus rebounds, almost two blocks. The numbers are beautiful, right? 55% from the field, 33% from downtown and 2021 and 2020 he shot above 37 percent from downtown he's given you 30 plus points in back-to-back -back seasons and he gave you 28 and a half in 2020 and then uh 23 points per game in 2019 we know how special he is in the regular season the thing is for me that's a problem is his production has somewhat dipped in the playoffs and that reminds me a little bit of Julius Randle. I want my best players to rise to the occasion, to be their best selves when it matters the most, like Jalen Brunson. I don't want Joel Embiid going from 33 points per game in the regular season to 23 points per game in the playoffs. Was he playing through a really bad knee and an LCL injury? Absolutely. But if you're healthy enough to play, you play, and he did, but I'm going to judge you like you're 100% good to go. I, I love Joel Embiid. I don't want to say I don't because I do. I think he's a very talented player. I think he's one of the most unique players this game has seen in a long, long time. And I believe that him and Jalen Brunson would be quite the dynamic duo. I think that a 1-5 pick and roll, pick and pop with Brunson and Embiid would be maybe the best duo in the National Basketball Association. And I think in the playoffs, when the game slowed down, yes, you have Embiid on the block right there, but we've seen in the past, especially against the Boston Celtics and Al Horford, Embiid has struggled to create his own shot in the half court. And that's where I think Jalen Brunson fits right in because he can space the floor. We've seen Brunson play his best basketball when they're playing a five-out offense and he can do the manipulative foot footwork that he does so well in the paint. The fit with those two would be incredible. But what's the price? What's the price you got to pay to trade for Joel Embiid? It ain't going to be cheap. We saw what Rudy Gobert went uh, for this past offseason. What was that? Four first-round picks, including Walker Kessler. It ain't going to be cheap trading for Joel Embiid, and you're going to probably have to overpay if you're the New York Knicks for the Sixers to send you to New York, a team I'd probably call a rival and someone that's also in the same conference as you are. So let's take a look at what the Knicks possibly could trade. I think, honestly, everybody is on the, on the books in a Joel Embiid trade except for Jalen Brunson. I would seriously consider trading everybody on this roster except for Jalen Brunson because you got your guy in Brunson, and if you can get your number two guy in Joel Embiid, that is a step in the right direction, no doubt about it. But it's not just players like maybe an Emmanuel Quickly or an OB Toppin or an R.J. Baird or a Julius or a Quinton or a Mitchell Robinson. It's also the fact that you have 11 future first-round picks over the next seven years. The Knicks, along with the Oklahoma City Thunder, are the two teams in the NBA that are most equipped to make a trade for an NBA superstar. But you got to remember, it's not the fact that you got to give up X, Y, and Z to get Joel Embiid. You also got to give him the freaking bag because the guy is making one of the most ridiculous amounts of money an NBA player can make. I mean, the dude is making $47 million, $50 million, $54 million, then $58 million as a player option in 2026 and becomes a free agent in 2027 when he is 34 years old. I like the fact that he is on under contract and you have him as a cost-controlled asset for those amount of seasons, but that's $200 million over the next four seasons. That's an all-in type of move. Trading for Joel Embiid is the move that this regime will be forever tied to. Leon Rose, Tom Thibodeau, World Wide West, you came here to bring a superstar. Is Joel Embiid the hat rack that you want to hang your hat on when you go to bed at night and you are the guys that brought Embiid to New York? He's a great player, no doubt about it, but there is a bunch of risk that is involved with trading for a player like Joel Embiid. It's an all-in move. You don't get this one back. This is one that either makes you or breaks you and will forever have you cemented as either 
some bums or some studs in Madison Square Garden. So NBA Analysis, a NBA website that puts together trade ideas and stuff like that. Uh, they put out this trade idea back a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to go off of this trade idea. Just this trade idea in specific. To be honest, I don't think this is enough. I think the Philadelphia 76ers would hang up on you if you said we'll give you Mitchell Robinson, R.J. Barrett, and four unprotected first-round picks. But it's not my trade idea. It's NBA analysis's trade idea. So I want to ask you, would you make this trade? Would you do it? Type A for accept. Type D for decline. Let me know what you think in the comment section. For me, I think you got to pull the trigger on that trade. There is no way that you would ever get Joel Embiid for that cheap. And I know it's pretty uh, funny to say cheap when you're talking four unprotected first-round picks. But, look, it's Mitchell Robinson. That's a talent upgrade. And all you're having to give up is R.J. Barrett and a couple of first-round picks, or I guess two pairs of four of first-round picks. But I'm going to be honest with you. It's not my favorite trade idea. I would prefer a package around Julius Randle because I do worry about a Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson front court. Um, swap out R.J. Barrett, put in Julius Randle. I'd feel much more comfortable about that trade. I also honestly think it would take those four unprotected, maybe a couple of those cheap picks that no one wants, really the heavily protected first-round picks, and then maybe two of the three of OB quickly and Grimes. Like, uh, training for Joel Embiid is not going to be cheap, ladies and gentlemen. It is not going to be cheap. So I'm going to let you guys give me your trade ideas in the comment section. Share your trade idea for Joel Embiid down below in the comment section. I'm going to be checking those out. I'll reply to a couple. And maybe the best I like I'll put on the show coming up later this week. Appreciate you guys tuning in. As always, you guys always show up and show out here on New York Knicks Now. Shout out to the real ones. Remember, give me a follow on Twitter, and we can talk some Knicks ball over there. We'll see you later.